Life on the streets. John has been on the streets for many years of his life and he's just done two or three months in London on the streets. John Folan, my friend, is going to tell Danny Michael Sloggett, me, life on the streets, how it really is today and how it's been for years. John's going to tell me now as a friend. He's letting me film it because he wants to share it with you and I want to share it with you. So this is life on the streets. John Foland, today, 2019, July 4th, when America got independence from Great Britain. John, what is life like on the streets the last few months and all your life? London was superb. I stayed clean. Uh, I did go a month without showering the first month and the second month. Of, uh, about a month without showering and then about three, three weeks without showering. And then I was able to get showers once once a week or uh, in with that time period. I had gotten some clean clothes from the Jesus Center, changed the clothes. I had uh, problems with shoes. I had four pairs of shoes while I was there. The pair that I went with didn't have a good heel base in my, I had walked around all over London from Westminster to Leedonstone to Stratford to Ilford to Wanstead to Victoria Embankment to uh, London Bridge. Uh, Borough, St. George Circus, Piccadilly Circus, Oxford Street, uh, Regent Street, from also Church to um, Marylebone, Westminster, uh, Harrow Road, uh, Finsbury Park. Uh, I slept in Hyde Park one night. I was down uh, of St. John's Way one evening, slept in the port there. I slept on St. Pancras Ports on Upper Woodburn Way a fair amount of the time. The truth is probably only about half the time. But I slept on Great Portland Street, very nice place over there. I found one place where I'm lucky I didn't get run over by a car, where I slept two nights, and then the third night I seen a rail, and I had seen traffic going in there because it was a parking garage. And so I moved and uh, was lucky to have realized that in advance of a car coming through there or maybe getting run over in that one spot. But I slept there three or four times and that was very nice. But it was also very good on um, a Great Portland Street or up near, uh, uh, well, over on Veer or in one of the parts of Squares or the other. And it was fun time, St. George's Church Ports or... Uh, I did have a problem with things coming up missing. Uh, two blankets were taken uh, within a day of me finding them. My backpack only lasted four days before it was gone with my passport information and my friend Paul's phone number. The, the real Paul, not the Paul who I think there was a misunderstanding of who I was talking about and then some obligate stranger started talking to Mandy that... Uh, he was Paul and that I was using everyone and I had never met the man, but I had been talking about Paul up here and then Paul who rode me to London did a very good job finding King's Cross for me and dropping me off. But I, the first night I was supposed to meet my friend Jason Pike, we used to call him Servant Bazaar on the Amityville Truth Board. I had been using the internet long before I had Facebook. I was on the internet for seven years before I had my Facebook and I was on the internet for uh, five years before Facebook started and I made a lot of friends in the Publish Enigma forums and in the Amityville Truth Board and then by the time I had a Facebook I had already been on like the Full Speaks, other occult forums, the public, Pink Floyd Publish Enigma forums, the Amityville Truth Board, another Amityville board with Tracy Lynn Thornton who at one time uh, was married to Ronnie DeFeo, uh, other uh, People who I had talked to before Facebook or on MySpace and had a zillion friends for for 20 years on the internet. And I thought it worth my time to stretch out to people and try to be friends and see if Facebook was worth anything at all. You know what I'm saying? Or if I could really make that sort of make 50,000 friends social. Yeah, but people shouldn't depend on Facebook. They sh no, people do depend on it. And they shouldn't. That, they should policy, not depend on Facebook. There is more to life. To do not depend on social well media. Depend on your soul and your beliefs. You are better 
than watching other people. You are someone yourself. I want to give you the confidence to be yourself. And together, we're going to shine on. Without their permission, or people not being able to get their friends back, personal friends, after they've been blocked one way or the other. Now they're a Facebook user and they're gone. If they can't get me back from blocked, if it was their choice, a woman or my brother or anyone else, if a woman who was having an argument with me blocked me and could no longer get me back and disappeared like Facebook user and there's, you know, and it's not a, a, a situation like uh, Flinton or his idiot wife and uh, one of my friends wants me back, you know, whether it's April or Adam or Mike or Steven, and I believe Facebook cut my communications with that Adam and Mike. When my, Adam and what Mike gives social back. media the right to cut people from their family when they met their family for it and it's just all disgusting it seems to be like a profit but we're talking about love and families here and this is not a profit this is real love so please don't think social media is real this is real we're making real films but not a lot of the things you see are real but what i'm doing is real i everything i do is real because i care about people and i am real but not everything you see is real so please know the difference between real and false. John is, John is real, he's my friend. And I'm filming his story, because I think you need to know it. You need to know some real stories, Facebook. You need to know some real stories, social media. I do believe you have been brainwashed and lied to so many times. Here is another real story from Danny Michael Sloggett. Everything I film, everything I do is real. And here is another one. My friend John is American and he has lived rough in London for the last four months. John, did you have some bad experiences sleeping rough in London? No, I thought it was tremendous. It was kind. I had four whole leftover McDonald's meals. I had two Big Macs that did not have a bite out of them. Fries were good to go. Once in a while, you get a McNugget just set aside. Or uh, my friend, let me see, Andrew? Was it Andrew? Andrew, I believe it was Andrew who bought me a uh, double cheeseburger and fries and uh, a Coke. I think he had, well, I might have had a, co a coffee. Double cheeseburger and fries and coffee. I gave the chicken nuggets, uh, two, two cheeseburgers, two fries and a chicken nuggets chicken nuggets to carly and her girlfriend whoever ate them tend to hit to them to split even though that's a low amount and nick got 20 of the 40 that andrew gave me along with the wonderful mcdonald's 40 pounds at a mcdonald's thank you andrew and the 40 year old birthday girl who gave me 40 pounds the same night even though i needed it so cherishingly and the, fit, the, my, the wonderful, 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 uh, save to God's soul gentleman, uh, the black man who got out of the car and handed me 50 pounds and got a train ticket and I'm back in Jaywick. I love you all. It was much more wonderful than it was not. One night sleeping under a blanket in the pouring rain, the blanket soaked and my clothes stayed dry. Was it a miracle? You, nonetheless, nonetheless, you tell me. Wonderful time, kidding around about that. Most days it was quite easy. Some days it was too cold to sleep. In the, in the this is real people. This is real life. You need to believe in what you're watching. What you're seeing right now is a miracle because most people are performing things. Most people reenacted it before they filmed it. This is natural. This is free flow. There is no reenactment. This is real life. So please, whatever your criticism, do not criticize something that is natural and genuine I'm real, I'm free. And God loves Gabriel. I am natural, I am real, I am free. And I make real films about real people. Johnny's real. So whatever your criticism, keep it to yourself. All I want to hear is good things, how we make a difference, how we make life better. Me and John, we, we will shine on. And guess what? John just stepped on the streets for three months in London. And he's sharing these, he's sharing these stories with me right now. So I'm going to share these stories with you. So please don't think that I'm out of depth. Me and John are partners. John, please can you tell me, what was it like sleeping on the street some nights when bad things happen? How do you, how do you cope with that and how do you overcome that? 
my friends. Okay. And I love you, and I'm always here for you, and I love you. <laughs> I'll start when I was much younger. Things would happen to me. I would go back to my spot, and my thing would be gone, or there would be some accident. Maybe my lighter would slip out of my hand and go into the garbage can if I was... Uh, throwing something into the garbage can, my lighter would slip out of my hand and go in the garbage can. Something would disappear or be stolen, and I used to react like, oh, Lord, fucker. Like I was going to get pissed off or something. Small wasn't going to do it. Small wasn't going to do it anyway, but I'd be like, God damn. And I started to react like that where I'd get tense when something wrong happened. The lighter would be too small. I'd always walk away from it, but I'd feel stressed that uh, something didn't go my way. You know what I'm saying? I started to relax a lot with people where I'd walk up to something where I'd lose lots of money. When I did do dope. When I did do dope. Problem with people is... You did dope years ago. They want to bring it up, and I never had a problem with it doing it. My attitude usually changes to I, I give a fuck less about anybody's opinion about it, the angrier they are about it, or if they're restrictive about the law without more than the cops ever anyway. I always felt the biggest, the best way to hide your dope pipe was to hide it behind your male finger, not uh, defaming anybody or putting anybody down or telling anybody you're going to get them or they're fucked up. You know what I'm saying? And you could get away with things like hiding your stem or not uh, telling anybody you smoked dope if you weren't rude. You know what I mean? Even if you smoked it. But when people would get rude to me, I would never take it, but I would never punch back. I would tell people, uh, 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 I'll take it in some without saying a name. A black friend of mine who I had considered on and off very uh, you know, cherishable, but otherwise uh, bitching about things like that. Like, uh, what, well, you better get off my neighbor's door. You don't tell me I can't go to my buddy's house, dude. You know what I mean? And that's how I started to react to people. Even though I really regretted some small loss being a damaging thing to me, I would never do it. But sometimes I lost a lot of money learning to do the things that I did smoking dope, even though it was never a business or anything harmful to me or anyone else's personality, just to say it that way. Nothing that was ever criminally moral. You know what I'm saying? Or if you understand my whole joke, nothing that was ever criminal. I mean, in the reality, take of morality. You know, nothing Nothing that was a wrong to anyone or no hurt, with no intent to ever defame or put anyone down in any instant when I wasn't doing with, it, dealing with anything relating to smoking uh, crack cocaine, I'll say it that way, or marijuana. I also have a habit of very well differentiating crack cocaine, I'll say it that, that way, because I smoke Do you know what it's like to live in the real world? Do you know what it's like for people to get through life? Do you think that you're perfect because you've never been through problems? Do you think that you might not go through problems one day? How about you understand why people that go through these problems are real people and these things make them who they are, but they're still good people. They're still good people. They're still good people. Turn that camera right here because I'll tell you what I'm saying. I'm saying that if you smoke crack and you don't steal, God likes you better than a fucking cop that would take your dope plants or arrest you. Well said. So if you're rich and you earn lots of money and you do crack, you get away with it. But if someone steals to get crack, then they're all scum. But guess what? Maybe some rich people that do things that we don't know what they do. Maybe they uh, are bad people, reality. really. So why would you say people store, that are poor no are bad people when rich people are doing what poor people do, but they can afford to get away with it? It's disgusting. We are all the same. Can we please come together and please understand this is a di- this is this is an ep- epidemic. It's all over the world. We're all blaming others. It's not fair. Please treat each other as the same. Whatever our addictions, rich or poor, we've all got addictions. We are all the same. I love John. John Bolan, my friend. I met him seven years ago on Facebook. Here he is. He's an, he's an actor. So, John, yeah. what, what we was where was we? Uh, we were in Leetonstone at the uh, uh, kiosk. I'll say it that way because they call convenience stores kiosks in Germany, and my wife will understand this, and others will. It's not an internet kiosk. It's a a store. Okay, Daddy, just to say this, I believe that you, Danny, knew where the card was the day we were in Leetonstone. I pres- propose. That we, while we were in London, we went to our Bank of America trip. Bank of America moved over to their cousin Vinny's house. 
and I, I can't find anybody at Subway. <laughs> so take a check. <laughs> if we were at the convenience he's store... He's a funny man. Okay, he's got a personality. Fine. And he's a it's genuine fine. person. Who lives in Four Essex? He's four not what you think he is. Who lives four John is a decent Me, person. Yeah, talk to I believe in John. In John's a good soul. Please believe no one, in yourself. No, no. If I believe in others, why can't you believe in yourself? If I can, if I can believe in other people, you know that I believe in myself. I do believe in myself because I'm six foot two. I've got blue eyes and I can walk around the room like this. I feel pow- powerful. But guess what? When I was little, I didn't feel powerful, but I always believed that one day my, my dream would come true. John, John is part of my dream. He's a genuine guy. John, what does he... Thank you for the beer, Danny. It's been it's a wonderful ear reproach to come back and still see my pal Danny. Third time's a charm. Back for the third time to visit Danny and his wife, Gemma. Can't wait to see Danielle. Haven't seen Star since the first time I was here, except for one ride up to wherever, Clacton. And uh, we may be in for some other trip. Abby Yeros needs to see the Floyd, and so does Carrie's Maybe da- Daisy can come over here to Danny's if anybody would ever really come to sign an autograph. Really, it's the true story of the amazing division, Bell Folland, and the Pink Floyd artwork. Even though careful with that action, Gene is not an issue. Well, you, Gene, is not an issue if I didn't say that any more than you would, Daisy. You've got an exclusive. My friend John, that you've been following his story with me for the last six, seven or eight months. Well, this is the latest part of that story. And we are not drunk. We are not skunk we are just happy genuine people at the end of a long day and i'm gonna let john finish his day because john has slept homeless in london john was you treated with respect when you slept homeless in london over the last three months was you treated i love you by the way everyone shine on was you treated john with respect well, yes, I felt I was treated with respect, even though I claimed Tesco was allowing a Citibank card in my name or Citibank cards in joined accounts uh, from Canary Wharf. Going around to the Tesco's all, all over London, maybe in a smaller circle than all over London would portray in speech, but four to six team stores by the time I can't count anything that went on, by the time it, someone shopped at Sansbury, McDonald's, or uh, co-op, the local co-op there with the card or anybody who used it or anybody up on uh, Amwell. Amwell and Clerkenwell, or people through that direction who knew about the card or had heard of it from Tesco's before Tesco's really started backing down around the city, except for the people in King's Cross knew too much too late, and other stores were too far for me to ever even try to find any way to to come to an adjustment of anything except that Richard Lee was in the wrong place at the wrong time. I'm not talking about my father, Richard Lee. It's AKA Richard Lee. Okay, the man from 305 Heinwald, the man in the car, the man I had met two times who I'd met at the subway and said, you're Richard Lee. And I said, who is Levi Stone? I believe that the FBI had pitched me a Facebook profile with the URL tag Levi Stone, like Leighton Stone. Or that the name was fictitiously arranged to sound like that to dump the whole situation with Levi or Leighton or Leland or Levi Stone up there in those surroundings. But the people actually happened to be too close to me by fair attraction where I'd figure out the first day I walked in the door over there at Gemma's friend on 482. I would walk in there and if I was uh, morally adjusted when I went in number four Essex or anywhere around the town, by the time Richard Lee and I got along, there would be no problems in that argument except he was contracted to do that by sure despite. Other, uh, I, I haven't even bore down on the argument of claiming my father may have been involved in either contacting Ashley Bloomfield and asking him to jack up the price of the house I was in or uh, contracting, I'm going to say this because he's going to get a good one when it comes back to the police want to catch him in Facebook or on a phone call saying he wants anyone dead. I'm going to tell this to him so he don't run his mouth like I'm going to kill you. It's just a statement, even though I wouldn't take it as a vain rule. Okay. 
Uh, I believe people have been harassing my wife. I would never blame Mandy because Mandy's been screwed around for the last three years by the police when I was in Cologne. She was set in a position to be their best speech on the murder of her son's father. And by the time Rocky Connie was framing me, she would take my side on the sheer elegance after the port arrest in front of her house while I was home in May of 2018. You know what I'm saying? I would never uh, make a problem for myself by being harsh to anyone. Bernard, I liked, despite not having, you know, an enormous relationship with him. Do you have a lot of... You want to stay there? Yes. Okay. Okay. Light this for me. Yeah, I like you. Okay. They want to hear... Sorry, it's your time to speak. They're waiting for you. I've never disliked Bernard Williams, although I, you know, casually fantasized about the relationship not going that far with Mandy. But Derek and them, uh, those all, Mandy is my friend and lover at one time and would be very pleased to have any intercourse with me when I was around if I wasn't a married man while I'm waiting long for my wife to take me back if I want an orgasm with her and Mandy's not fully adjusted to me. You know, or any other fan without uh, bringing April into this conversation because I knew her when she was nine, according to her complaint. Have you never wanted to meet real people before? Have you never wanted to meet someone that was generally real? When you meet John, he's real. And whatever you're seeing is real. So please don't criticise or try and understand that. Just remember that he's natural and he's real. And he deserves respect for that. You're natural <laughs> and you're real, aren't you, John? Yes. Please don't mention, mention Adam because nobody knows Michael Blake from me. <coughs> nobody has to say anything, but Wendy was pleased to have heard from me after all these years. Wendy and Dale and I were the closest friends, irregardless of the fact that I got along with Michael better than anybody I ever met in my life. When he was a child, that should have been my own son, except that Dale was my best friend, too. You know what I'm saying? And Wendy, so pleased to hear from me. Me thinking her voice sounds happier than she'd ever been or since we lived with them and even there. What, what gets you hope when you're having a bad day, when you've got no food and you're on the streets and you're, you've got no home? What gets you through that day? What gets you through? Uh, I woke up on St. Pancras porch on a Sunday morning with 10 pounds by my head and I don't know who left it there. It was the second time that happened, except one 10-pounder I thought I might have had misplaced in my pocket when I had a little money and still had the bank card and was using it, and uh, uh, the red, the Bank of America card. Uh, uh, two men who gave me 10 pounds just walked up and sat in it on my feet when I was sitting there. One thing I didn't want to do was ruin my own conversation with people asking them for money. You know what I'm saying? Can I have a pound? Uh, doesn't spare my conscience. Because my cataloging information and disinfragrant mind would be quite dismissed if I was bugging people for money all the time or being aggravating or mean. Assaultive in speech. In any general sense. What gets you through times when there is nothing left and you're alone? What gets you through that? I always love friends and I always tried as hard as I could to do my friends best pleasure and my best endeavor was to walking away. I would weigh Dale and the others when I was in the crack game. I'll say this because I still have plenty to say. Like, is this worth, like, this in general? Can I walk away from this affair like we had fun after it's over? I would approach people while I was smoking crack very lightly. I'm a very intelligent man and I would see a slight loss. But I wouldn't take money loss in the, in the endeavor of making friends and getting high with them because I enjoyed getting high and I enjoyed getting them high. And I thought there was never a loss in the money if you were friends. If I owed you a gift, I gave you a beer. If I gave you a hit of crack, it was like a beer that was yours when I handed it to you. And I thought I could weigh things for an immorality. He's talking out of context. He's not actually giving people crack. <laughs> He's just saying I'm it. saying, in those yeah, plans, he wasn't I can doing see that. Immorality he was taking it out of context. So please don't think that Listen he is a bad person. If somebody because he is not. Something He's talking something out of context. Yeah, just, but you're. But people don't understand that are watching. Well, I haven't done it in a long time. Listen, yeah, but you're talking out of context. The, here's the context. I could judge a morality about as fast as I would stand and listen to somebody who's, if I knew them, who stopped me in the street. 
my friend Dale or anyone, if I was around staying at the house, he was stopping me and I was going, I, uh, uh, or, you know, generally not him or anyone in any immoral way, because all my friends weighed out real well, but, uh, yeah, uh, what I was saying was I could weigh an immorality about the moment they judge it on me. Yeah. Give it down. I will. So, so is about in your... Yeah, I could like. What What is the answer for? What is the answer? What's the answer for humanity? Let me finish. What is the answer for humanity? Courtesy, kindness, special friendship, and long and neat. Uh, special courtesy, special friendship, special long windedness, and special. I am with him, by uh, the way. Charm. John is my friend. And I'm just basically friend. asking him what is the answer for humanity because John is in that mood. John, what is the answer for humanity? Well, what, when I address my full belief, I say that Satan and the devils are mean enough to carry out murder if they can throw into a long-winded fight with men, which they do with hundreds of thousands or even millions of men all around the world. Over one enrager or another... Or I I'm talking David Attenborough. I'm talking save the rainforest, save the earth. Uh, David, David Attenborough. Attenborough. Don't know who he is. Who David is. Attenborough is a natural presenter on TV, and he is a really lovely man. And David Attenborough is the king, and he wants to save the planet, and he always wanted to. And he is a king. We love David Attenborough. Uh, Pennsylvania has the. Uh, he is a modern day Charles Darwin. Well, I'll say about the like the. What do you, what the you know about Charles Darwin? Uh you're rushing too many conversations. No, you don't listen, have to have Charles time. Darwin. I wasn't past the ego hold. Nobody Charles Darwin. Emission gases. That's what I asked you, Charles about. Darwin. I thought Darwin uh, understood God in the very vaguest. No, no, Charles Darwin proved that evolution was not from God. Uh, it was from animals that evolved into humans. I don't believe Charles that Darwin that was the first person that said that humans evolved from animals, not from God, like the Bible says. What, uh, what do you think about that? I don't believe that, that Charles Darwin was a bad guy at all. Okay. I'm not saying that, but do but you know who Charles Darwin is? Yes, I almost tendered the, uh, the energy to go into the Darwin Museum there on Woburn if it doesn't change to another name by there that you see <laughs> the Charles Darwin's Museum I walked back twice. I would have went Come on, John, let's go outside. Come on. Good man, yeah. Okay, but my Come belief on. is God made us all out of I'm spirit. taking John outside. I was born out of the spirit John. of God himself, but I this is my ex John. This is my ex girlfriend. And I'm not saying that to be in a rude manner with men or to claim myself a big person, but I believe in the chain of the instance of time, God existed entirely above himself and believes that no one can chain a man to a dog. Out of it. The devils fell so close to me right in the first day when they attacked Jesus Christ and I. So I the only experience that I think funny about all this is I would never chase a man down for a fault, and I believe nobody was as swift as me except Jesus Christ in the history of mankind, and maybe David. And I also have tales of my belief that I could see what was happening on earth even thousands of years ago, were coming early before I was born as Christ. Okay, now I'm going to stop that conversation because it sounds a little silly. Jesus Christ was a different person than me, but I existed shortly after him because a fight developed between him and another man who existed second to He's me. He's a good But came back claiming his He really is a good soul. I've known John I'm now for seven years far as on the Facebook. Ohio Valley and I've met John for over a year I now. Tell he's you very misunderstood, but he's very kind. And he was, I trust Man, him. He was not a bad person. He would not hurt me. His and act, my and I want to be me. And I will never I'm give up being me. I hope you've never met man. anyone like me before. Because I am me, Danny Sloggett, and I love you all. And, and shine on from me to you. And this is John. John, we're saying goodbye to everybody. John. Until the depths of time, without another woman's name being mentioned or obligerate, until men got into a raging fist fight because they were calling each other gay and it went into a large, larger audience than me and Rick and because I had lived outside of the country and even Rick's moves across the United States before I have to seal my lips first if I can't prove every fact I say out of my mouth if it's repeated to you or recorded when the bank can't get anything right 
on my fucking uh, bank account, even though that's a whole center problem in its own and gets out of my father's fault, even to the police in Manaka, before they come back to Pink Floyd and me and Mark Zuckerberg can, uh, thinking he can shut me down within a week for uploading a Pink Floyd video and then Stop contend that, a complaint Mark from Zuckerberg. David Gilmore of Pink Floyd we're, we're, LTD, We upload Pink Floyd videos because we love Pink Floyd. LTD he was in the Pink Floyd video. Why was you banning him from posting it? He was in the video. Now listen, in Rich's company, disgusting. A. Bloomfield LTD, Follins LTD, people have made a mockery of me in regard to real bank crimes that they thought they could slime me around or act like I was a huckster until they blamed their bank fraud on me after they got tired of calling me a queer and homosexual because their egos were too big because I fuck a lot of women. But Ladies and gentlemen, we're, we're going to end this. John, we got to end this interview. <laughs> Okay, or some big head we, thinks we, he's we, better than me, just, just, or I'm too intelligent Can we say that we're going to make, himself. Let's, let's tell them we're going to make more films tomorrow, yeah? Uh-huh, yeah. Jo me and, and John... And my boys, if I don't call them that because I'm John, no John, officer. John, we're going to tell them we're going to make... boys... Tomorrow, Tom we're going to make more films for you. And people I worked with, Dale We're back. And Tom, Danny and John, and we're back. And, and we're going to tell you how it is. And we're going to tell you how lampposts shake. Even if it made the losers irritable. John, see, see you tomorrow. Good, goodbye, everybody. Yeah. We're going to see you tomorrow. We've got to get up for work. And John, make more films tomorrow, yeah? And tell everyone how it is. Yes, we will. I have to get my tobacco out of the house. We love you, everybody. Shine on. John, I'll leave have you got a bit of love to say? I want to say to you all, shine on. Thank you for watching our films. And guess what? It's time for bed. Shine on. John, got okay. something to say? <laughs> Cigarettes, please. And let me know if Gemma wants anything or needs anything. I'll help you guys out. Let's work our problems out. I mean, I know me and you get along great. Gemma, on a good day, let's work our problems out so nobody gets in trouble. I feel, I believe, I know what I'm talking about. I'm not going to say anything unless I talk to you personally and privately first. And do hear me out on anything I say, even the bank. The city bank. Please, people, else. watch telling you how life is and how it is for John to sleep rough. Have a good Just night, everybody. Calm, and we're going to make many more films don't tomorrow. Think I'm an idiot about Thank anything. you, Danny Soggett, to you all. That ass, and uh, my love to you all, John. Eugene, I'll say, rather than making it all a public publicity house to save my uh, friend Kazak, to say, uh, do something right for Kazak about his mother's death. And Randy Hollick, I happen to be close to, and Roy Wetzel uh, knew me enough that I believe he had my guitars sold from another friend.